Welcome back, everybody. Okay, if you're a middle child, I happen to be one. You may have grown up with a little less attention. Yeah, we all know what we're talking about. Which means you may actually grow up to be a people pleaser. Also guilty. Joining us now with more from one middle child to another, we have got leadership coach Teresa Vatsa. Good morning, Teresa. How are you? Good morning, Tina. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. I find this whole uh, correlation fascinating. And by the way, it's not mm -hmm. just for middle children. You could be a people pleaser mm -hmm. no matter your, you know, whether mm -hmm. you're an only child or no matter your birth order. But also, you say women are more guilty of being a people pleaser. I think I've, I learned a lot of this from my mom. Why is this a bad thing? Yeah, it's such a great question. And, you know, part of it is that we have been conditioned as women to grow up as caretakers, right? So think about the times when we were young and we were asked, be nice, sit down, don't make a fuss. And so as a result of a lot of these messages, and, and the stats show about 55% more affecting women and 40% affecting men. So you're right, it affects both, but largely women because we are taught from such a young age to be nice. And as a result, we don't want to appear too fussy. So we mm -hmm. tend to say yes. And sometimes we get walked over, right? And used and abused as a result. So how do we know if we have the disease to please? You know, the telltale signs are often when you find yourself apologizing, when you find yourself saying yes to things, even as your body is telling you, I don't want to do this. The biggest one is lack of personal boundaries. I can't say enough about boundaries. Mm. This is when you don't know how, when to draw the line at how much people ask you, and then you agree with others. So whether or not you agree with what they're saying, you just nod your head and you say, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yes. Hey, look, guilty as charged. I did that a lot when I was younger as well. Same. And the big thing is you stay quiet. You stay quiet because you don't want to make a fuss. Mm -hmm. So what happens then, like, how do we fix it if, if we're too afraid to break out of that shell that we've been doing all this time? You're right about age, because you, you reach a certain mm. age where you go through so many life experiences and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't do this anymore, right? Like, you just feel like you're treading water, you're gonna explode. Yeah. But what, how do you get there? How do you get there if you're younger or you're still of a certain age and you're still, this disease to please is real? How do we help yeah. ourselves or do we seek help from the outside? You know, I think there's a lot of things you can do, but the very first thing I would say is you need to get to the root. Mm -hmm. Like everything lies at the root. So what is it about saying yes that scares you? So what's the underlying fear? Because most of the time when people are super agreeable, it's because they're afraid of conflict and that usually stems from something. So there are a number of things that can help. One of the things I suggest is of course, coaching can help. Coaching helps unlock those, those behavior patterns. But the other thing that's very helpful too is just practice, like practice saying no to one thing. I often give this experiment to my clients. Just choose one thing today, okay. which you are going to say no to that you otherwise wouldn't and start to build that muscle of self-trust because that's what it takes is self-trust. So baby steps, because then there's a whole other discussion we could have about the art of saying no, because then you're so afraid right. of like, uh oh, what if I hurt their feelings? And then there's, you yeah. said protect your boundaries. So that could be at work. That could be with friends, that could be with neighbors, that could be with family. And sometimes it gets trickier, right? Like if you're dealing with mm -hmm. work stuff where you're there so yeah. many hours a week or family, because yeah. like, what do you do yeah. if they take it the wrong way? So do you, do you think it's like, it's easier to do it with a relationship you're not so intricately tied to, to start off? Like, does that help? For sure. I would always say start with a relationship where there's low risk. So for example, maybe it's a parent or a child, or maybe parents not low risk depending on the situation, but start with a relationship where you feel as though you can start to collect some small wins. So for example, you could start with your, your son. Like I have a son who is always asking me to buy him things. And sometimes I get very frustrated and I just say yes, because I don't want the conflict. Where, whereas now I'm really practicing holding on to the boundary of no is no. We bought something for you last month, so we're not going to do that today. Mm. Practice, like practice where it's easy and then work up to the bigger things like CEOs and very demanding bosses where, quite honestly, you don't want to become known as someone that always says yes, because I often will say to women, that becomes what we call a non-promotable task. Mm. And you want to be seen as respected and in full command of her voice. And that's what boundaries give you. P.S. It's incredibly freeing when you finally figure it out, right? Isn't it? Yes. It's freeing. Yes, if, 
liberating. It just liberating. feels like you are in you are in control. Yes, Teresa. Where do we find more information? That was inspiring. Thank you so much. Great tips. Where yeah. do we go to find more? Awesome. You can go to my website, TeresaVoza.ca. Super, super simple. And if you sign up for my newsletter by noon o'clock, noon today, I will send you 12 free boundary statements that are astoundingly effective and won't get you fired. We say yes to that. Thank you so much, Teresa. Have a great day. Pleasure to be here. Okay, Thank you. take care, love. Coming up next, you sound off. Today is National BFF, your best friend day. Why do you love your best friend? What makes them so special? Call us, email us. Make sure you text us. No, actually, don't text us. That's not a thing. <laughs> hey, hang on. Here's Devo's phone number. I'm sorry, D. I don't know what just happened. Tweet us. Chat live on Facebook and YouTube. Trump oh, dear. Yeah, okay. just call Devo. We'll be yeah. back with more BT right after this. Text us.